When I get home from work, I love to relax, and relaxing for me is staying fit. And I'm so fortunate now that I can stay fit, because eight months ago, I was dead. I'm Leo Donnell. I am a 43-year-old wife and mother of two daughters. I am the corporate manager of prevention and wellness for Orlando Health, which in and of itself makes me a huge advocate for wellness and disease prevention. My story begins when my brother was diagnosed with a genetic heart condition. I have two young daughters, so my concern was being here for them and were there some steps I needed to take in order to possibly slow down the progression of his condition should I be diagnosed with it as well. So when Lee and I found out about her situation, we went through the process of meeting with cardiologists and everything. I think more or less I was there for moral support. Of course my opinions weighed in on the subject, and but she understood the medical side to most of it, being that she's been in that medical industry for a while. I went to Dr. Garcia, had the 64 slice CT at Dr. Phillips Hospital. It was determined that I had an anomalous right coronary artery. The anomaly that she was born with is associated with an incidence of sudden death. This was a very serious condition. I needed to have surgery, and it was going to be elective surgery. I think I actually asked her cardiologist at one point, just draw me a picture so I could see what's going on. And once that picture was drawn, um, I think I was pretty much sold right then and there that if she felt she needed to do this, then that's what we were gonna go for. From our perspective, the operation that we did on Lee um, went technically just as we had conceived it. Moved her from the operating room to the intensive care unit where she was recovering. When Lee came into the CBICU, she was relatively stable, and she was actually making great progress. She was actually waking up, and she was doing excellent. The nurses up here are all, you know, top of the line nurses. These are the best of the best. And when they start screaming for help, you know something is wrong. They all started gathering around, and I heard, get the crash cart. When I presented back to the ICU, to Lee's room, uh, Lee did not have a pulse. We're following ACLS protocol, trying to get her back, get her rhythm stable, get her blood pressure stable. On my cell phone, I'm calling Dr. Sand. Suddenly, a few staff members pulled me into a private room. My first thought was, I don't understand what's going on. It was explained to me that she was in cardiac arrest for a half an hour, that they had performed CPR for a half an hour. Dr. Sand and I kept doing CPR one after the other. The thing that was going through my mind the most was that Lee was too young. Our goal was to get her back to the operating room and give her an opportunity for survival. After they got her through the second surgery, I was being prepared that she may not even know her name. At that point, we were concerned because we did resuscitate her for a while, and the big concern is, you know, the brain needs oxygen. And from that point on, it was a waiting game. There was a few days of suspense and of um, prayer, intense prayer, and uh, focused on doing everything technically and medically that we knew to do right. And in this case, you know, God delivered a good outcome. C-H-E-L-S-E-A. What's that spell? Chelsea. Hi, Sugar Pea. Chelsea, it's cute time. Oh, is it time to be cute? Yeah. I overheard her and um, my stepdad, Steve, talking the other night, saying if it wasn't for me and my sister, she probably would have said, I won't have the surgery. We'll just see what happens. But since me and my sister are here, she said that she wanted to be there to help us and to be there for us as we grow up and be the moral support. Do I have boo-boos and do I have things you have to be careful of? Tell me about them. Um, I can't be on this side and I have to be on that side. Why is that? Because your box is on this side. My box is over here. 
Mrs. O'Donnell's problem required implantation of a defibrillator. This little device, I tell my patients, uh, behaves as a sprinkler. If she ever does have an electrical fire and her heart begins beating very, very rapidly, it will be there to literally bring her heart back to beating normally. It frees her to go out and exercise, participate in the things that she wants to participate. Her family doesn't have to worry, is you know, tomorrow the day, is five years the day, is 10 years the day that she's gonna need something like this. Hugs for the big girls. <laughs> so here I am, eight months from the date of surgery, and I'm back to all of my normal daily activities. Things haven't changed. Remember when I came home from the hospital and you felt like you couldn't touch me and you weren't sure what to do? And then the other day you gave me a hug, what was that, like a week ago? I used to lean my head on her left shoulder whenever we went to hug or to like make any body contact in mother-daughter way. But after the surgery and having the defibrillator put in, I kind of just left it alone because I knew she was already in enough pain and I didn't want to cause her anymore. Yeah. I said hug me as tight as you want, right? I look at pictures that I, you know, take yesterday, today, last week, last month, and I go, you were dead. It's just remarkable. And I love you, and I'm really, really glad you're here. To think of how lucky we all are to have her back is just an amazing feeling. I owe a tremendous amount of gratitude and thanks to my physicians, making sure I'm here to continue life with my family and with my children. The care, the advanced medical technology I received through the Orlando Health Heart Institute, it all played out beautifully. It was just like an, an orchestrated symphony and thanks to that, I'm here to sing my song.